Jack Crockett is an artist. He'll tell you he's only known within a 30-mile radius. When the great Scorchy Taws first interviewed Willie Crockett, Ronald Reagan was the president, and gas cost a little bit more than a dollar a gallon. A lot has changed since then, but not Willie. I'm not very affluent, but I get up when I want, go to bed when I want, do precisely what I want at least 80% of the time, and uh, there's a lot to be said for that. It's been 10 years since we last visited with the Nancock's Willie Crockett. 10 years Artists later, Scorchy went back to Willie's studio, and in that story, he revealed what it was that so attracted him to that particular artist's work. Artist superb and our friend and relative. Not blood relative, you gotta understand, but marshland kin. That runs deep, too. I was with Scorchy that day in 1995, and I saw for myself the profound respect these two great artists had for one another. They were truly cut from the same cloth. He was fantastic. He was, he was first class. You know, he, uh, I always regarded him as one of the very best. That's cool. Well, let me take it up to him. <laughs> Fourteen years after that, we visited Willie once again. Certainly. Is here. You're not hard to impress up there, are you? <laughs> Willie's still painting and cracking jokes and holding court and wrestling with the demons only artists know. I always have a, 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 a sort of a fight going on with a picture. The, the picture's always telling me I can't do this, and I'm always telling them that I can. And that's not unlike Willie's relationship with the outside world. He's always known that he was a different kind of person. Most of, most of the people are a lot, a lot better than I am. And, you know, they're more predictable, more, you know, they, they, they live good lives and they're good people. And uh, sometimes I wish I, I wish I could, no, I really don't. I like being one of them. <laughs> what Willie likes to do most of all is to paint. I never get tired of painting, and I, I love painting. Well, yeah, I am tickled to death. Thank you very much. Over the years, Willie's work has become a must-have for any serious collector of Delmarva art, and his Onancock Gallery is a busy place. Maybe the only place on Delmarva where you can not only buy a painting of a landscape, but the landscape itself from the real estate company his wife runs next door. We all have to sell a certain amount of our time to make ends meet, but uh, the way I measure success is how much I have to sell and how much I can keep for myself. Willie may have sold some of his time over the years, but he's never sold himself, nor has he strayed very far from a poem he wrote as a young man and recited to Scorchy all those years ago. I saw myself in minnow ditches on the surface of the tide looking down to someone who was looking up at me. And I guess I'll always be there. No matter what success or failure face may bring, I'll be linked to those green waters to a sunburned, to a sunburned face, face and the salty beginnings of my youth. I was so trusting to the ebbing tide, a forever child looking to see if my reflection would predict some future on the flood. Now I'm older but still reaching for myself and the broken image of my face keeps smiling through the ebbing and the flowing of the years. Narcissus' child always laughing, yet never mocking me. We have always been together, always reaching for each other, the forever child and me. In Onancock, Virginia, this is Charles Paparella for WBOC News. We might have some driftwood out here. You have driftwood out here. You have a few little pieces. I have some drift.